Hi there, welcome back. What we've got here today is a match set of uh, amplifier and preamp. It's the Quad 303 amplifier and the Quad 33 preamp. Both of these are quite iconic, they're quite a following, and they both belong to the friend of mine who seems to have an unlimited supply of vintage equipment, much to my satisfaction. Now, this first part of the project will be the power amp, the 303, and this one's had a bit of work done on it. We can see that it still has the original 3-pin power plug, which is a bit of a problem to replace if you wanted to. But the on-off switch wasn't there and the RCA connectors certainly weren't there. In fact, where the on-off switch was is where the uh, audio inputs used to be. So obviously someone has been in here. Now the first part of this restoration is going to be on the power amp. But just looking at the preamp, I've noticed uh, one problem with that tape switch over there. It's not clicking right. I think the others are fine. I'm not sure if there's anything to change in here. I believe some cleaning of the controls will be necessary as usual, but um, that I'm going to leave for a second phase. Cosmetically, this preamp is in perfect condition. No markings, no damage, everything looks just fine. And I do notice that the back has um, had some connectors made to convert the DIN connectors into more commonly used RCA sockets. They've done quite a good job actually, very well done on all of them. And the connections marked at the back certainly facilitate these uh, construction of these sockets. So I've done some of what I propose to do and I've also done some things that I didn't mention I was going to do. I've replaced these caps as I mentioned on the one of the power amp boards and I've purposely and also that one there very importantly that's the one microfarad uh, Vima uh, foil cap. What I did do is I didn't change these at all on this side so we can have a comparison when we measure the results. What I've also done is I've replaced resistors, all resistors on here. Some of them were out of tolerance, none of them were open or shorted, but I decided to replace them with some good quality um, metal film caps, uh, resistors, and I have purposely left the pots, the trim pots, as they are, because um, just replacing them with uh, multi-turns for the sake of replacing them I don't think is necessary. So what we're going to do now is we need to get, we need to set this pot here, this trimmer, so that we can get 67 volts exactly to the supply, as the supply, to the two boards. And the way to measure that is between this point here, pin 1 or connection 1, and that one there, which is the connection 9. We could also measure it on that board, but I'm, I'm going to measure it on these. And I need to get 67 volts and I need to adjust that guy till we get 67 volts. So what I'm going to do now is connect the power and I've replaced or removed that uh, temporary mains connection because I, I got the, the proper jacks. And I've connected that up there. I'm putting the uh, dimmer limiter on maximum limitation, so just one 40 watt bulb that's active. Switching it on and switching the amp on at the back. The dimmer flashed once, so capacitors were charging. Now we'll see what voltages we are getting on here. Okay, we got 63 volts. We need 67. So I'm using a insulated high tech. Um, Trigger adjuster, it's from a kebab stick, and we'll slowly, it's the other way, whoops, too far. It's pretty sensitive, but you can get it. There we go. 67 volts, exactly. Now, 
That means that both this board and that board should be getting 67 volts. Let's see what this one's doing. Sixty seven point two, sixty seven point two. It's drifted up slightly. Sixty seven point one. Close enough. Now, what we need to do is we need to adjust, and I'm only going to do it on this board because I've changed these caps. We need to adjust that guy there till we get 33 and a half between one and five. And I believe that's the guy there. So we want half the rail, 33 and a half volts. Let's see if we can get that. Thirty three point six, three three point four five, close enough. We'll leave that there just to make sure we don't have crazy voltages on this side. Thirty three point three, good enough. So our power supply has been corrected or adjusted. We've got the right voltages on there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a signal, we're going to see what the response is. I don't expect great dramatic differences between the two but I do want to see whether especially this cap improves the frequency response of um, of the of the amp because this thing is notorious for having a pretty crappy low end in other words it starts cutting off the frequencies and um, below 100 Hertz and I want to make sure or I want to see if we've made any difference So here I've got a 50 millivolt RMS input signal coming in, going the same signals going to both channels. They are at the moment superimposed and it's at one kilohertz. I'm going to up the signal to 100 millivolts RMS input signal. We have 3.93, 3.94, 3.95, 3 thereabouts. So the two channels are equal. At one kilohertz, what I want to do now is see if it makes any difference when I change the frequency. Let me just make sure this is, make sure it's normal acquisition. Yes, yes. I'm reading the RMS voltages on both the left and the right channel. And I'm going to the frequency range and I'm going to up it to, there's two kilohertz. Still pretty equal, 4.07, 4.07. There's 4 kilohertz. 3.9294. 3. These things change depending on uh, what the time base is. Say 4 volts, both of them. Let's go to 10 kilohertz. There's 10 kilohertz, 3.9, 3.9. Let's go up to 15 kilohertz. 3.9 something, 3.9 something. So we're still equal up to 20 kilohertz. Near as damn it, we're still equal. Both channels are the same. And this thing has been pretty flat. If I go crazy and put 30 kilohertz, I start seeing a slight reduction, but not much, 40. So if I want uh, 3dB, we're talking at, bloody hell, this thing's at 60 kilohertz, still not 50 kilohertz, 3.15. So as you can see, it's starting to come down, but it's pretty high up there. And the two voltages are practically the same on the high frequencies. Back to one kilohertz. Back to one kilohertz with 3.95, 3.93. Okay, now I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to come down to 400 hertz. Still the same. 100 hertz. Still the same. There's 
70 hertz. I'm seeing a slight phase shift between the channels. Four point and uh, the yellow channel is uh, slightly higher than the blue channel. Just to get it back to the same base, there we go. The time base has to be changed, otherwise we don't get a good reading. There's 40 hertz. Now, at 40 hertz, you start seeing quite a difference. The one you see there in yellow is at 3.88 and the other one's 3.68. So you start seeing a difference, 30 hertz, bigger difference. 20 hertz, there's your big difference. Um, at 20 hertz, although you've still got slight, you've got a bit less than you had at a one kilohertz on both channels, you start seeing the blue channel here, which is the unaltered one, losing some of the base. And of course, you're seeing a phase shift coming in there. Let's go a bit further down, 10 hertz. Well, there, both of them are suffering now. But as you can see, the blue trace is, well, not quite half, but nearly half what the yellow trace is. But if I put it for 20 kilohertz, 20 hertz, I beg your pardon, we're sliding down 3.3, 3.4, as opposed to nearly 4 at 1 kilohertz. So we are slightly down. We're still losing a bit of bass, but you can see that the unaltered channel is losing more. And that unaltered channel is the one that has the three electrolytics that had been changed uh, and were still not acceptable. They were pretty crappy capacitors. But more importantly, that uh, first capacitor, the 0.68 uh, film cap they had there, that was a really, really crappy little film cap they put in there. Better than an electrolytic, but still quite crappy. And I put in a one microfarad VMA cap, which is what I'm going to do now to the channel that I haven't altered. And we should get this up to uh, being equal again. And it looks like that this um, restoration is practically done uh, once I've completed that. And here we have the final setup. Um, I've replaced the caps on this board to be the same as that one. There's now one microfarad film cap on the input here. The three electrolytics were changed. The res respective adjustments were made. So from here to there, We've got 67.2, which is good enough. From there, it's supposed to be 67. From there to there, 33.5, that's 33.2. That's not bad at all. From there to there, we've got 33.2. Not bad at all. Now, the other adjustment we have to make, I have to just point out that although this is in, uh, it's now being set, it's in reverse you can get to the adjustment screws. There's one over there. That's the, the adjustment for the output voltage from the supply board. And then I think you can see it. On these boards, there are two holes on there. That one there adjusts the midpoint voltage, 33.5. And that one there is gonna adjust your bias current. Now to measure your bias current, there's two ways of doing it. One of them suggests you desolder one of the legs here from pin 2, I think it was, um, and try and get 10 milliamps. Adjust that pot there for 10 milliamps. The other way is because you've got two resistors in line between the, the emitter of the one transistor, transistor 1, and the collective transistor 2, between these two points, you've got 0.6 ohms, so you can adjust it till you get about between 6 and 10 millivolts by adjusting that one there. Now, this adjustment has to be iterative. You have to make an adjustment, leave it for a while. This adjustment is made, that there, the bias current is made with no input, no output. So no speakers and no input. And you make an adjustment, leave it for a while because the temperature of the transistors will affect that current. And this one here would is currently at 9.6 millivolts. I'll probably drop that just a little bit. It 
it's very very finicky this one there you could probably do with a um, multi-turn pot there we go it's 8.1 which is great and over here this one is drifted slightly as well 9.5 I'm gonna drop it just a little bit Eight point one. So we're done. We've got the voltage set, we've got the midpoint set on each of these, and we've got the bias current set on each of these. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the input in, put an input in again, and see if we've made any difference to the frequency response at the low end of this channel, which was slightly low. So there's our input, um, well there's the output at um, 1 kilohertz and if I bring this down say to 400 we're still practically the same levels down to 100 we're still again practically the same levels and if I start bringing this down to 60 hertz we're exactly on the same levels 30 Hertz exactly the same levels 20 we're still there so both sides are matching perfectly and that is solely due to that input cap being equal um, I could I could try something here which is if I take it down to 20 Hertz and if I placed a film cap across the input capacitor so in other words if I actually increased that let's see what happens See that? I'm putting a capacitor, another film cap, which is actually greater, just temporarily across there. And I get a slightly increased response from that channel. You see that? The yellow channel has gone up. Now that is when I put this guy in here. This is a 2.2 microfarad film cap. So that means if I did want to increase the... Um, frequency response at the low end even more because as you can see because as you can see it is slightly lower than at one kilohertz I could actually take that one microfarad capacitor make it bigger and that would give me a slightly improved lower end which I really don't think is necessary anyway that's uh, done really I've corrected the soldering at the back you may recall that uh, the soldering of those um, input connectors was pretty shoddy, so that's been corrected. A general cleanup has been done, and most of it was dust, nothing much to clean really, it was in pretty good shape. And so that part is complete. So there we have it, the Quad 303 improved. I won't say restored because there wasn't really that much to do. But um, this one's ready for another 20 or 30 years of service, I think. And um, on to the next project. I hope you enjoyed that.